The iPhone 13 is not out yet as of this recording, but it is officially available for pre-order. The floodgates officially opened Friday morning, September 17th. Pre-orders have apparently already outpaced iPhone 12 pre-orders this time last year, and some folks have run into issues along the way some apple card users as well as customers attempting to use apple's financing provider paybright have hit some roadblocks though that seems mostly resolved now needless to say the new iphones are a hot ticket item if you haven't already placed a pre-order this video is a quick attempt to give you a look at the different purchasing options out there in Canada. You might be trying to find the best deal on the iPhone 13, which admittedly is hard to find, or you're still trying to figure out which carrier you want to go with, or perhaps you want to go and take a look at these phones in person before ordering, or maybe you're still on the fence as to whether you want to upgrade this year. Let's take a look at the different pricing and payment options available for the new iPhone lineup. Good news, I've got a handy spreadsheet here that can help guide us along the way. I'll take you through the pricing and payment options for the major carriers, TELUS, KUDO, Bell, Virgin, Rogers, Fido, Freedom, Shaw, as well as purchasing directly from Apple. There's a couple things to note, as I'm sure you're already looking at the prices here. All of these prices are for the lowest storage configuration, which is 128 gigabytes. You can get storage configurations in the iPhone Pro as high as one terabyte, but most people will be fine with the 128 gigabyte model or a mid-range configuration. Plus, if you know the pricing on the 128 gig, it gives you a solid idea of how it should work on the higher storage configuration. The point of this video is to look at the pricing and payment differences from the different carriers as well as Apple. Oh, and one last thing, the pricing I'm about to talk about is the price for purchasing the phone and owning it at the end of 24 months. Some of the carriers have a different option for essentially leasing the phone for the two-year contract, which does substantially bring down the monthly price, but you don't get to keep the phone. You essentially have to re-up for another contract at that time or buy out the phone for whatever value difference there is, purchase the device. I'll talk about that more in a bit because it's actually effectively the only option if you're gonna go with Rogers. So let's dive in, let's start with TELUS. So with TELUS, you can go with the iPhone 13 mini for $40.67 for 24 months, which is $976.08 on the iPhone 13 mini, just coming under about $1,000 there. The iPhone 13 is 4713 for 24 months. And the iPhone 13 Pro is 5996 for 24 months. And the iPhone 13 Pro Max is 6638 for 24 months. There you go. And all of these options are zero dollars down, and you just basically pay the monthly fee for 24 months and then you own the phone. So TELUS is pretty straightforward there. With KUDO, things are a little different here because you can choose to put different amounts down. So the actual total price is the same uh, uh, in terms of 976, uh, just like TELUS, but you decide if you want to put a certain amount down or just pay the full retail price. You can put $184 down and then pay $33 for 24 months, or you can put $616 down and pay $15 for 24 months, or $736 and pay $10 for 24 months, or you can just buy the iPhone mini for 976 retail price. You can also get the iPhone 13, same type of thing. You can put down 339, 771, 891, and then pay 33, 15, or $10 respectively for 24 months, or buy it for the retail price of 1131. For the iPhone 13 Pro, you can put down $647, $1,079, 1199, and pay 33, 15, and $10 respectively for 24 months, or pay $14.39 for the retail price there. For the iPhone 13 Pro Max, you can put down $801, $1,233, $1,353, and pay $33, $15, and $10 respectively for 24 months, or buy it 
at the retail price of $15.93. So that is Kudo. With Bell, we go back to $0 down and you pay your monthly price there. So with Bell, it's a slightly different price than Telus. It's $40.84 for 24 months on the 13 mini. On the iPhone 13, it's $47.30 for 24 months. 13 Pro is $60.16 for 24 months. The 13 Pro Max is $66. 46 for 24 months there. And so prices are very, very close, almost exactly in line. With uh, Virgin Mobile, it's a little bit similar to the way Kudo is doing it, but you get a, you get less options basically. So for Virgin, you can, uh, on the 13 mini, you can put down $180 and pay $33.34 for 24 months or pay $980, which is their retail price. The iPhone 13, on the other hand, you can put down 335 and then pay 3324 for 24 months or buy it for the retail price of 1135 for the iPhone 13 Pro you can put down $644 and then pay $33.34 for 24 months or buy it at the retail price of 1444 for the iPhone 13 Pro Max you can put down $795 and then pay $33.34 for 24 months or buy it at the retail price of $15.95. Now, Rogers is a little bit different. And when I looked at their website, really, uh, they are trying to push you towards the leasing option. You know, I really would have a hard time finding the option to just pay a flat rate and own the phone uh, at the end of the contract. It wasn't on their website. So perhaps you could do that by phoning them. But that's why I put in this buyout here. So with Rogers, uh, instead of paying up front, uh, you have this amount that's at the end for the buyout. And so I put that in instead. So you would pay $27 for 24 months on the iPhone 13 mini, but then pay a $332 buyout at the end of 24 months if you want to keep the phone. For the iPhone 13, uh, you would pay $30 for 24 months and then a $415 buyout at the end. For the iPhone 13 Pro, you'd pay $39 for 24 months with a $508 buyout at the end of the contract. And for the iPhone 13 Pro Max, you would be paying $43 for 24 months with a $563 buyout at the end of the contract there. Now let's shift over to Fido, which is the Rogers discount brand here. For the iPhone 13 mini, you can put down $180 and pay $33.34 for 24 months, or buy it for the $980 retail price. For the iPhone 13, you can put down $335 and then pay $33.34 for 24 months, or the $1135 retail price. For the iPhone 13 Pro, you can put down $644 with $33.34 monthly for 24 months or $1444 retail price. For the iPhone 13 Pro Max, it's $795 down and $33.34 for 24 months or $15.95 for the retail price. Now let's shift over to Freedom Mobile. This is where things get a little bit interesting. So Freedom Mobile is a little cheaper. It's actually a lot cheaper than everything we've seen so far. It's $29 for 24 months, which is equal to $696, which is a $264 savings on the retail price of $960 for the iPhone 13 mini. Now it doesn't matter how you look at it, that is a steal of a deal. Let me finish the pricing here and I'll talk about Freedom just a little bit more. So that's the iPhone 13 mini. The iPhone 13, you can get for $35 for 24 months, months, which is $840, which is a $288 savings off of the $1128 retail price. The iPhone 13 Pro is $47 for 24 months, which is $1128 or a $312 savings off the $1440 retail price. And the iPhone 13 Pro Max is $53 for 24 months, which is $1272, a $312 savings 
from the 1584 retail price. So that's Freedom and you can see Shaw's right beside there. I'm gonna talk about these two for a second here. The main thing I wanna talk about here is both of these have significant discounts. They're technically sister companies, Freedom and Shaw. And at first glance, you might be thinking that's the obvious choice, of course. These have significant discounts from their counterparts. And so by all means, that may be the way that you wanna go because money talks. However, a couple things to be aware of, right? The first is that these have limited network areas. So Freedom and Shaw here have limited network areas. They're really only available in some of the bigger metropolitan areas and not even all of them across the country. So I know they're available in Toronto, for example, Ottawa, I believe, Edmonton, Calgary, Vancouver. That actually might be it. There might be one or two more, but there's, there's really not a ton of uh, sort of home coverage for these carriers within those areas. Now, uh, when you're not in those areas, you still have roaming coverage, but if you get like 20 gigs or 25 gigs from Freedom, for example, you may only have like one or two gigs if you leave the city. And so that's the key thing that you gotta be aware of with uh, Freedom and Shaw, is that you're kind of roaming anytime you're outside of those major metropolitan areas, and uh, it just doesn't cover all of Canada. That said, the other drawback here is that Freedom slash Shaw does not have 5G coverage yet, right? So you're buying a 5G phone, the iPhone 13 and as well as the iPhone 12 before it actually had 5G built in and uh, you just will not be able to take advantage of that on the Freedom or Shaw network, at least not yet. They do say that they are building that out and they are planning to set it live at some point, but for at least a while, you will not have 5G coverage. So you gotta keep that in mind and you have to think that's also why the uh, prices are a little cheaper over here because they really just don't have as compelling of a network offering as the other carriers. So they have to discount somewhere and they discount on their, their phones as well as their phone plans. However, if you live in one of those areas and you don't leave the city very often, that really may not be an issue for you. I've talked about that in some of my previous videos. I think I recently did one in June around the best cell phone plans that are out there currently. So take a look at that because they don't change too often, the cell phone plans. And you may want to watch that video as well so that you make an informed decision about where do you want to get your phone, keeping in mind the price of the phone, but also the network and the price of the plan and all that kind of stuff too. Anyways, just wanted to mention those caveats. Now, moving on to Shaw Mobile, there's really no difference here in terms of pricing. There is something important I want to speak to on the Shaw Mobile side. The plans are uh, the same. So $29 for 24 months on the mini, 35 for 24 months on the iPhone 13, 47 for 24 months on the Pro and 53 for 24 months on the Pro Max. Same as Freedom, but the pro the plan price is even cheaper here if you're already a Shaw customer. So if you're a Shaw customer and you get like, you know, uh, 200 or 300 megabits down already on your home internet plan, you can go ahead and get a $45 unlimited plan. I think it's 25 gigs. And so with Freedom, you have to pay $60 a month for a comparable plan. But if you're a Shaw customer for your home internet and you go with Shaw Mobile, you can get a plan for like $45, which is a great plan, and you get the phone for cheaper, so that's a really phenomenal deal. But I wanna mention something that does not make any sense to me. If you go to Shaw's website and you say, hey, I'm already a Shaw customer, show me the, the deals here, right? They'll show you that you can get this $45 plan and you can pay you know, $35 a month for the iPhone 13, that's fantastic. But if you are a top tier home internet customer, they call that fiber plus gig customers. In other words, you pay for home internet that is one gigabit down or greater. You know, you're in other words, paying the most you can pay for home internet. The price for the phone is actually more. Now I'll be clear here, like if you look at the iPhone 13, for example, it's $35 for sort of a standard Shaw customer, but if you're a fiber plus gig customer, it's $47 a month. So you pay an additional $12 more than someone else. Now there is some costing reasoning that they do this for because fiber plus gig customers only pay $25 a month for the Shaw Mobile Unlimited plan instead of 45. And so maybe they're trying to recoup some costs here, which is why, you know, you pay the $47 for, for 24 months instead. But you know, this doesn't make any sense. You know, these fiber plus 
best gig customers are Shaw's top tier home internet customers. They pay the most. Not really sure why they're not getting the best or biggest break on the price of the phone on Shaw Mobile. It seems just like a cost conscious thing, but they really should be making decisions that are more customer focused here to keep people loyal. And this just doesn't make sense to me. So all along the way, if you pay for top tier home internet with Shaw, you are going to pay more. You're going to pay $40 on the uh, iPhone mini instead of 29. You're going to pay $47 on the iPhone 13 instead of $35. You're going to pay $60 on the iPhone 13 Pro instead of 47. And you're going to pay $66 on the iPhone 13 Pro Max instead of $53. Again, you know, these folks who uh, absolutely take advantage of your top tier plan on home internet. Not sure what Shaw is up to there. Maybe they'll change their ways here. I found that interesting because it just doesn't make sense. But that said, not everybody's on the fiber plus gig plans. You know, if you're an existing Shaw customer and you know, uh, you wanna get a, a phone for, uh, for cheap, this is the way to go, right? So Freedom and Shaw are really the winners here. Now, if you want, you can also go directly to Apple, right? So of course, you can still go directly to Apple to buy a phone and they have the cheapest outright prices if you just want to buy the phone outright. They also have financing options as well. So Apple, the iPhone 13 mini, it's $949 retail price or you can pay $39.54 for 24 months there. If you get the iPhone 13, it's 1099 or 4579 for 24 months, 1399 for the iPhone 13 Pro or 5829 for 24 months there. iPhone 13 Pro Max is 1549 retail price or 6454 for 24 months as well. And of course, you can always uh, do a trade in as well at Apple if you want to reduce your price even further. You can trade in your existing phone. I've never personally done that before because I've always just sold my phones privately. I've always been a little worried that I wouldn't get as much trade in value because they'd look and see a scratch or something that I had on the phone and they wouldn't give me like the, the full value. And so I've always just sold my previous phones privately uh, to try and extract as much value as possible. But you can in fact do the trade in at, uh, at Apple. So there you have it. That's all the main buying options. At this point, there's not a lot lot of you know price differences in the market it's just sort of a little early for that but there is key differences how in how you pay for the iPhone 13 depending on which carrier you go with and whether you'll be doing a payment plan or upfront pricing the best price for going on a pay payment plan is easily Freedom and Shaw but of course there's drawbacks to going on that network if it's even possible in your area and if you're gonna buy outright it's best to just go directly to Apple for that that since their outright price is slightly cheaper than the rest. I'll also note that none of these prices include Apple Care, which is Apple's phone protection plan, which is sort of a warranty program, but also an insurance plan for physical damage. You can buy Apple Care for $199, which is good for two years, or you can sign up on a monthly Apple Care plan for $999. My opinion is that it's well worth it to get Apple Care since these phones are not cheap and they're really like little computers that you are gonna carry everywhere with you and they will go through a lot over a two plus year period. So the chances of needing a good warranty or insurance policy are actually pretty decent for sure. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, click that like button so more people can find the content and subscribe to get more videos from my channel, Technology Paul, in your feed as they come out. See you in the next one.